Okay, now we're going to attempt with some very simple things. We're going to show you some good and bad ways to do it. There are several ways to actually template a, a wall. So when we open up the software by tapping twice on the icon, it'll come up uh, with a, a caution that we have to uh, lock the laser into the level mode. That's the two lines up here on, on the uh, laser head. You line those two lines up, lock this, and say OK. This is going to come up every time we start a new file, a new page, and it's very important because it tells the laser we're measuring in this plane and everything that's shot above or below is flattened to that plane. Okay, there's some tips that come up. You can read these or close them out. Okay, we're in uh, the laser mode of line and we're drawing in the color blue. If I tap on that, you'll see that we can draw in lines, arcs, circles, and crosses. For simplicity mode, and we're going to explain these later, we're going to start off with lines. We're going to be drawing into color blue, and we can change those as we go. Now, first of all, I'm going to do the very simple. I'm going to start a new line. I'm going to unlock this, come over here, and I'm going to shoot two points on this cabinet base, one there. Notice I tap the screen, waited for a beep, then I move it. You don't want to tap and move at the same time. So it's a good, it's a good idea to um, let your hand go on here so you don't jiggle it around, okay? So now I'm going to start a new line and move it around this corner. If I didn't start a new line, you'd have this little angular uh, line going across here. So two points on the cabinet base here. Always when you shoot points, you want to keep them spread out as far as possible. Um, now I purposely didn't start a new line here to show you that you're going to have this little uh, angular line there. I'm just going to hit erase and touch that. We're going to clean that up later. Okay, now I start a new line again. I come over here and hit two points on my base unit there. Okay, now I start a new line again. Every time I hit a new point, I do that. Move it over here. Again, wait for the beep, then move the laser. Now, this is critical. We suggest that you always scribe a drywall wall because they're never straight. And later we can connect the two corners with a straight line if you'd like, uh, and you can decide from that how much to offset your back wall if you're using splashes or if the customer changes their mind later and wants to go from uh, uh, splashes to scribes, you'll have that. You won't have to go back and do it again. So now I'm going to start a new line and show you how to scribe the back wall. Uh, basically, I would hit a minimum of every stud, and you can also hit uh, more often than that. Now, purposely here, what I did was put a little bump in the back wall so that you'll be able to see that later on when we draw a straight line. So, like I said, uh, at least every stud. Now, when, very important, when we come to two drywall corners, because if you've ever drywalled before, you'll know that there's probably an eighth of an inch of mud built up there. And so we stop about three inches out, and then we purposely drill the corner right in the corner, and then come three inches out again. And then whatever spacing you desire from there. Now this is the proper way to shoot uh, walls and cabinet bases. Now I'm going to rotate the drawing, on the, always rotate to the front edge. And to clean up these open corners here, we're going to go to fillet, sharp fillet, and touch each corner like this, and it will close it up nice and sharp. That's what you want right now. You can fill it with radiuses and stuff, but that's not the time to do that. Okay, and if you wanted to see dimensions, you hit this. Now, notice the scribe wall has many dimensions on it. Uh, and the front cabinet bases have only one. These are the measurements you want to check. But if you want to check the back wall, okay, in this case, I would change the color actually to something different, select that, and touch on both corners, uh, but I'd have to ask it to draw a segment from this corner to that corner. Notice the red line here is straight but the uh, scribed wall is different. And we're going to talk about how to move that a little bit later. But this is the proper way to do it. You use two points on every straight wall of every cabinet and then scribe every drywall piece. 
Now, we're going to show you auto fill it now. Auto fill it is a little faster, and you can auto fill it the cabinet bases, these lines here, but you still have to scribe or start new line on all of these. So, very simply, I'm going to start a new page that's blank. Notice it says lock your laser in the 2D mode every time I start a new page, okay? So now I'm going to do auto fill it. Auto fill it allows me to connect the corners as I go. So we have our two points on this cabinet base. And I don't have to start a new line now because it's faster. Two points on this one. And notice that it closes in that corner nice with a nice sharp fillet. Notice that I'm also waiting for the beep before I move. Now, the reason we do that is pretty obvious. Um, if, if I move the laser before it beeps, uh, it takes about a third of a second for the laser to beep. In that beep, the laser measures 50 times to that wall. If it does not see 47 or more measurements exactly the same, it'll give you a laser error message. This will happen if you move or if you shoot something shining as a reflection or something that is absorbing the laser, okay? But so we auto filleted this, it's much faster. Now we can switch to start a new line. First we leave this open, then we start a, a new line and we scribe our back wall. Again, scribing the back wall, drywall is very important uh, because you don't know what the customer is eventually going to want. Again, stop three inches out of the corner, go in the corner directly, and then come about three inches out. Whatever the trowel is on the drywall uh, uh, installer's you know, hand, that's how much mortar you have built up in that corner. Okay, now you only have to clean up two corners by, again, fillet, sharp fillet, touch the two ends like this, and they close up. Also, we can rotate again, always rotate to the front cabinet edge. That way, if we're dropping a sink in, uh, we can make sure that it's square. Notice that I used one hand to spin the laser and one hand to tap the screen. That's important because uh, uh, if, you, if, you, if you go back and forth, it takes more time. And secondly, uh, you have better control. You can also flip this uh, back this way if you're doing it uh, left-handed. That makes it easier. So now we've actually templated a particular situation. You can check, again, the measurements or dimensions. And this is when you would check dimensions. Uh, it's, it's important that uh, you check dimensions before you start offsetting or putting radiuses on and, and things like that that are going to confuse the dimensions, okay? So that's shooting a basic cabinet layout. Now, before we finish, before we want to do any editing, we have to make sure that we've shot everything uh, before we can disconnect the computer and sit down and edit the job. For example, in this case here, I would like to shoot a sink center. Um, we're going to explain all the ways of shooting a sink center later, but right now I'm going to change the mode to a cross mode, and I'm going to come over here and shoot um, a point right where my sink center should be. And I just tap the screen, and as you can see, it draws a little cross on the screen. This gives me a snap point to drop my sink in later.